One year ago, I made my first devlog called A Year in the Making, a video where I showed you how we began working on our roguelike game called Billy's Nightmare. So it now felt obvious to make a new video covering our development over the last couple of years. This way we can get everyone up to speed and new viewers can see how the game has evolved over the past year. So without further ado, here's Billy's Nightmare, two years in the making. About two years ago, my friend and I were trying to come up with what kind of game that we wanted to make next. We tried a lot of different genres, like a tower defense game, a top-down stealth game, and finally an RTS game. But nothing that we tried really felt right to us. I then remembered another game that I had worked on earlier. It was a prototype for a Zelda-like RPG game, which had eventually transformed into a roguelike game. We really liked the concept of random generated levels, and decided that our new game should be a roguelike. So we used my prototype as a blueprint, and began working on our new roguelike game, which at first didn't take place in the nightmares of a small boy but instead had a sci-fi theme. We tried some different level layouts, ranging from old ruins, forests, and some kind of spaceship. The theme of the game is not the only thing that has evolved since the beginning. As you can see, the level layouts in this early version look nothing like our current version. Back then, we used a very simple way of generating random levels where basically a tile moves around randomly, carving out corridors to create the map. I believe this is how the levels are generated in Euclid Throne. And that's a pretty popular game, so obviously there's nothing wrong with generating levels this way. But we felt that the levels looked a bit too random for what we had in mind. Instead of just a bunch of random corridors, we wanted to include more distinct rooms. So we skipped our Nuclear Throne inspired level generation, and made a new version where lots of rooms would spawn randomly, with smaller corridors in between. We really liked where this was going, and after some more fine tuning, we managed to spawn rooms with different sizes, which immediately made the game much more interesting. We also decided to add doors to all rooms. This way, we could close them behind the player, and force him to defeat all enemies in the room before moving on to the next one. But all these new changes would soon start to make our game very similar to another well-known roguelike game. Now that we had made some fun changes to our level generation, we felt that our old sci-fi theme didn't fit anymore. So we decided to change our theme to the one that we still use today. The game would take place in the nightmares of the pajamas wearing boy, Billy. This way, we could create all kinds of different levels and enemies, because the game is set in a dream. We also decided to make the final change to our level generation, which we still use today. And that is to pre-build all our rooms in Photoshop to get a layout that we really like. The rooms are then recreated in Game Maker using code. This way, we get a random generated level with rooms that still make sense. It was also around this time that we started showing Billy's Nightmare on Twitter and YouTube. Finally getting some feedback on the game felt really good, and people seemed to like what they saw. But not all comments were positive. A lot of people commented saying that our game was too similar to Enter the Gungeon. The way we spawned new enemies in the rooms looked pretty much identical to Gungeon, where they would randomly appear from red circles. People also said that our UI looked a lot like Gungeon's, because they also have red health icons at the top left, and your weapon down to the right. And our white reload bar above the player's head was also copied from Enter the Gungeon. In an effort to make our weapons more unique, we tried giving them randomized stats, it was also at this point that we added Santa's Elf to the shop, whose original purpose was to reforge the stats on your weapons. But all this only led to more comments about us stealing the random stat system from Terraria. It felt like whatever we did, we only ended up doing something similar to already existing games. 
reading all the negative comments, we were wondering if perhaps we shouldn't make a roguelike game after all. But we still had some tricks up our sleeves. We weren't ready to give up just yet. Following all the negative comments, we knew that we had to make ourselves much more different from Enter the Gungeon and Terraria. In the beginning of our project, we were thinking about ways to implement waypoints to our levels, to make it easier for the player to backtrack. But since waypoints already existed in Gungeon, we knew that we had to do something else. Therefore, we decided to add mounts to the game instead. The mounts would make you run really fast and allowed you to backtrack in no time at all. All the different outfits in the game would get their own unique mount, which also made it more fun to unlock new outfits and see what their mounts would look like. People seemed to really like our new way of fast traveling and would frequently request new mounts for us to add. We also made some changes to the way new enemies spawned in the rooms. Instead of spawning them from red circles, like Enter the Gungeon, we added a couple of portals that would spawn all the enemies. And to make the waves more clear, we added some text to the top of the screen, which tells you how many enemies there's left to kill. But our biggest problem remained. What were we gonna do about our weapons, ammo and reloading? Not only did our weapon system make us similar to Enter the Gungeon, but we also felt that it made the game feel kinda boring. Despite having lots of weapons, you would spend most of the time playing only with your starting weapon. Why? Well, since the weapons required ammo, you wanted to save all of it for the boss fights and not waste it on weaker enemies along the way. So you would always end up running around with your starting weapon with unlimited ammo. And this is not very fun. We wanted to make a game where the player would have access to a lot of attacks at the same time. So we decided to totally remake our weapon system and replace it with abilities. The player would also start the game with a more powerful secondary attack related to his selected outfit. So every 3 seconds or so you could now deal extra damage to the enemies, which made the game feel a lot more fun and not as monotonous like it was before. And depending on what abilities you equipped, you could get very unique playstyles. And since the abilities and secondary attack uses cooldowns instead of ammo, you no longer had to save your attacks for the bosses. So now that you could play with a total of 4 attacks at the same time, the game was a lot different from before, when you would only play with your starting weapon. People also commented saying that they really liked our new changes and that they couldn't wait to play with all the abilities. And that's when we realized that no one had played our game yet. Perhaps it was time for us to release a demo. Before releasing the demo, we had to teach the player how to play. So we spent a couple of months putting together a pretty big tutorial for the game. Here we also introduced the player to the main villain and using a bunch of dialogues, the player would also learn about the story. We also spent a lot of time fixing our networking code, so people could play together online. Because most of the roguelike games out there only has local co-op, we felt that it was very important to include online co-op to make our game more unique. With the tutorial and online co-op finished, we finally felt ready to upload the game. So, on January 31st, we released a demo for Billy's Nightmare. The first couple of days, hundreds of people downloaded our game, and we were pretty overwhelmed by all the amazing feedback that we got. We also got some really great let's plays on YouTube, and it was fun to finally be able to see people play our game and watch their reactions. Hearing people say they couldn't wait to buy the full version also kept us motivated to keep working on the game. But our honeymoon wouldn't last very long. Because pretty soon, people started sending us lots and lots of bug reports. Some bugs weirder than others. I kinda expected that we would get a couple of bugs, so my plan was that I would quickly fix these bugs and then I could move on and continue working on our new level for the game. But for each bug that I fixed, it felt like people messaged me with two new bugs that I found. And when I uploaded version 0.1.1, it turned out that many of my bug fixes had actually created new bugs. 
I began feeling like I was drowning in problems. Plus, I knew that I eventually had to start working on the rest of the game, and also keep my schedule of making these devlogs. Unfortunately, all this led to me getting burned out, and I lost a lot of my interest and energy to work on the game. Finally, I realized that the only thing I could do to feel better again was to simply let go of the demo and move on with everything else that needed to be done with the game. Of course, we are still very grateful to everyone who plays our demo and send us bug reports. But I will probably wait to solve all these problems until the game is finished and it's time to polish everything. Since I moved on from the demo, I now feel much better again and it's great to finally be able to work on our new level for the game. We quickly come up with new ideas on what to do, and we keep getting a lot of great suggestions from you guys on both YouTube and our Discord server. I also get new subscribers daily to these devlogs, which motivates me to keep showing you our work on Billy's Nightmare. Speaking of subscribers, my analytics tell me that 30% of my viewers are not subscribed, so if you like these devlogs, consider subscribing. And if you're already a subscriber, I'm curious, how long have you been following the development of Billu's Nightmare? Let me know down in the comments, and I'll see you in the next video.